in the lean theory, you have to remember those words all go together. You cannot mix them. Mortgage, lean, two-party, those all go together. The other one uses deed of trust, title theory, all right? So make sure you understand different words mean different things so that when they say, hey, in the deed of trust, you're going to know, oh, which one I'm talking about. That's the deed of trust, that's the three uh, title theory systems, the three-party system, all of that. So that's how that works. In Indiana, we use lean theory, okay? Now, over on page 215, here's some stuff that I bet you guys didn't know. As the borrower of the money, you have certain duties. <laughs> he said duty. <laughs> Come on, we can still have fun even on video. As the borrower of the money, you have certain duties that you have to uphold to make sure the asset, the house, doesn't go into disrepair because you are jacking with the bank's collateral. So you've got to make sure that you pay the taxes on it. You got to make sure you keep the repair up. You got to make sure that the maintenance is in good order, all of that. Here's something you didn't know. In theory, let's say you want to add a debt to the house you're sitting in right now. You actually have to get the bank's permission to alter it. No one in the world ever has done this. Because the reality is, what happens if you mess up and crack the foundation and it leaks and now you've got a crappy, is it worth less than a hundred grand? Yeah, you just messed up the collateral for the loan. So in theory, anytime you modify your house, you are supposed to get your lender's permission to do that. Hey, I'm gonna add a fourth bedroom on. And you tear the back of the house out and you all of a sudden you go, uh, I don't think I know how to do this. Now you've got a house with a big hole in it. Is it worth less? Oh, hell yeah. So technically, one of your duties as the borrower of the money is you are not allowed to modify the residence without permission of the mortgagee so that they can know that you're changing their collateral on them. Thumbs up. All right. Now, in the mortgage, there are several different things that are going to happen. Are we all good or do we need to take a break for a minute? Good. Let's roll on them, cowboy. One of the things inside a mortgage is this thing called default. Now, default is defined in the mortgage, all right? Thanks, Sarah. It is not late. Late is a whole separate thing. Hey, my mortgage was due on the first. On the fifth, I got a penalty. That's late. Default typically means two to three months without a payment. If default happens, Several things start to kick in in the mortgage. I had a closing several years ago, and this young lady was my client. She was 21, single, buying a house. We got to the closing, and she started reading the mortgage. Now, I will tell you, nothing wrong with that, except that the mortgage is federally mandated and it's about 24 pages long of legal text. And I said, oh, I'm sorry, if I would have known, I'd have had the mortgage sent to you yesterday because you certainly aren't gonna sit here and read the mortgage, 24 pages of legal document. We'd be here five hours. And she said, well, my dad told me to, to read everything. I, I commend that 100%. And if you want to do that, we can stop the closing 
and come back tomorrow. And the guy working at the title company said the smartest thing I've ever heard, and I repeat it all the time now. And this is what he said. In that document, there is nothing in there that's going to hurt you if you make your payments on time. Conversely, if you go into default, there's nothing in there that's going to help you. And that's the way you need to look at this. That mortgage virtually is ineffective if you make your house payments on time every month like you agreed to. The mortgage only kicks in when the stuff starts to hit the fan. And one of the things that kicks in is when it goes into default, they are going to activate what's called the acceleration clause. The acceleration clause. The acceleration clause basically says this. You have proven yourself unworthy of our money. We're unworthy. Wayne, we want the rest of our money now. You have an outstanding balance of $90,000. We are calling it due today. And if not today, yesterday. That is called the acceleration. They are accelerating all of the money that you have spread out over the next 30 years to today. Now, do not get confused here. They are not seeking 360 payments of $500. They are seeking the balance that you still owe currently. Everybody understand that. You borrow money, I still owe 95. That's what they're looking for is that 95 grand, not the other 30 years of the payments. So my question to you is, if they activate the acceleration clause on a consumer, how does that guy give back $95,000 today? Foreclosure. Foreclosure. That's the first one everybody says. Don't write that down because that's wrong. <laughs> but that's the first one everybody says. What would be better than foreclosure? Couldn't you just get a different loan through a different lender? All right, refinance. Good answer. That's Sell the a property. Second way. You guys are missing the obvious. What business are you going in? Selling. Sell the damn Selling property. It. All right. Remember the other day when we did that math? Remember my story? My story was what? I too much debt. calls you and says, I'm in trouble with the bank. I need to sell my house for what I owe and walk away. And we did that math problem. How much do you owe? I owe a hundred grand. Okay. I know you got 1500 in closing and the Modulin group charges 7%. Therefore, blah, 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 blah. We list your house for 109, 139. That is a very common scenario. Yes, foreclosure, that's the last thing you want to happen. I doubt you're going to refinance because you now have proven yourself that you are late on payments, so no other lender is going to touch you. That's an option, not a good one, probably won't work. The most and best option is to call one of you guys and go, I'm in trouble with the bank. Come and sell my house so I can pay my loan off because they called it due and I want to pay it off and get out. All right. So when the activation clause or the acceleration clause gets activated, this is where we get the phone call going, hey, I'm in trouble. Come help. Okay. So that's the first thing. Does that affect your ability to get another loan? If you, as long as you pay it off to the bank, it doesn't matter. Does it matter? Will it affect anything in it the future? It will ding your credit because if they called you in, Sarah, and said, 
do the math and you 109 139 and you closed it they would call that satisfied on your credit so your loan is satisfied closed but here's the problem you probably have a couple months on your credit of either late or no payments that's how you got into this situation to begin with sure okay all right now the cool thing is that's going to roll off in about two years whereas a foreclosure is going to stay on your credit seven to ten years so selling the property is obviously the ultimate ult, optimal answer you still have some ding because that's how you got in this position i lost my job I haven't made my house payment in two or three months. They called it due. I called an agent. He sold it, closed the loan out. I still have three months of late payments on my credit, but those will be gone in two years. All right. Now, there's some other things that happen or could happen. The note, remember two documents, the note and the mortgage the note has value you borrowed a hundred it's worth 200 because it has value it can be sold to another investor has anybody ever got a loan and by the time you get home there's already a letter in your mailbox saying we've sold your loan to another bank happens all the time they will sell the IOU because it has value right I loaned 100 but I'm getting back 200 so there's profit in there I can sell that to someone else well the problem is the IOU is the bark of the dog where's the real bite of the dog the real dangerous that, that's part of the bark. Where's, okay. If I was going to loan you money, Cameron, and said, if you don't pay me back, what am I going to do? I may bitch and moan and piss and cry and whine, but if I said, if you don't pay me back, I'm going to take your house, where's the real bite in this dog? It's the mortgage oh. that collateralizes the house. The IOU is the bark. Hey, you owe us money. Hey, you owe us money. Hey, you owe us money. Oh, you owe us money now? We're going to court and taking your house. There's the bar bite. So, so the bark is leverage. The note. Sorry, go ahead. I said the bark is basically the, lever the leverage they have over you. Like the bite is the leverage. That's the, how the analogy I use it is the mortgage. I mean, if I owed you $5, Cameron, big deal. So what? What are you going to do? Beat me up? Take me to court? But if I didn't pay you, you came and took my car for that. Now I have a more of a reason to make the payment. So the fact that you can bark at me all day, you owe me money, you owe me money. You're going to bite me in the butt and take my car. So the analogy that I use is the IOU is a bark of a dog. The mortgage is the bite. That's the one they really want to avoid so when they sell the note because it has value they then assign the mortgage to go with it so whoever the investor is that bought the note also gets the bite they have to go together questions i see a lot of puzzled looks maybe i'm not doing the analogy correctly one of them has value the iou i can sell it i'm going to sell it to sarah well she likes the idea of being able to bark at somebody you owe me money but if they don't pay she wants the ability to now take their house so i sold her the iou but i'm going to give her the mortgage that goes with it so she has both of them the bark and the bite all right 